Hi, this is Robert with Pioneer Smokehouses, and today we're going to do something a little unique. We have the um, Smoke Hollow electric smoker here, but uh, we're not going to use it uh, with the regular electric. We're going to do uh, cold smoke cheese. Now when you do cold smoke cheese you have to get up kind of early in the morning um, when you're in this time of year because well the sun will make it too hot to uh, to get the temperature where we need it. If the temperature gets too high the cheese will melt. So we're not using the main heater element today. What we're going to use is we're going to use the um, smoke chief cold smoke generator for that. So I will put some pictures on the screen. I'm not going to change the camera around a bunch like usual. I like to leave the camera in one spot and uh, we'll go from there. So um, so you know that I'll put the picture right here. So that's a smoker. I have it turned on its side. Um, so what I did was is that I, even though I said I wasn't going to do it, I did a small modification. But this modification will be easy because we can just take two flat washers and seal up the hole that I put in it. So first, if you look at the first picture, I went from the inside and drilled a pilot hole in a spot that I knew would be safe for the pipe tanner. So then I went to the outside on this side back here where the hole came through because these sides are double sheeted but the back is not double sheet metal. And so then I put the pipe, I drilled the hole here with the step bit. And uh, so that way you can see that. That is a step bit right there. And it just, it has um, little ridges in it. And then you can just line up your pipe with it or whatever you want to drill a hole for. And you can see how big you need to go. Um, sometimes you can just wrap a little blue tape around it so you know where you're drilling to. That way you don't have to play around. I did not do that today. I drilled it in. And then when I was close, I tried fitting it and then went one more to make it the hole large enough. The hole will need to be just a little larger because we'll be at an angle with the pipe. And so to get that pipe to angle, it needs to be larger or elliptical. And uh, I mean, it doesn't have to be a tight seal. It just has to be, you know, to where the pipe runs in. And then um, I'm going to take one more picture here um, because I forgot to take that earlier. And uh, let's see if we can get a good picture Okay, so you can see, if you look in the picture here, you can see that the pipe comes out right next to the uh, heater element, which puts it pretty close into the middle of the smoker, which I kind of like. It doesn't have to be exactly close, but the closer the better. So what we're doing today is we're doing cheese nuggets, um, smoked cheese nuggets, excuse me. And we can use any type of cheese for this. I like to, um, I, I'm... I like convenience. So what I like to do is I like to get a party bag for like a party platter of pre-cut cheese nuggets at your local store. And then I just um, spread them out and I would normally use a lot more than this. But today I'm just going to use this. So first I'm going to place one on the top tray here. And then I will place the other one on the bottom tray. We've got Jack and Pepper Jack and uh, Colby Jack and then we have cheddar and that's just what came in the bag I didn't you know like make a special effort to get a special cheese if you want a particular type then just buy that cheese just remember that when you're smoking cheese you want to avoid soft cheeses like mozzarella they um, the melting temperature is too low and so not only would you need to do something a little bit different, you'd want to keep the temperature lower, but you also might want to put it on a piece of parchment paper or on a piece of uh, pink uh, paper for that matter. So I've loaded that in there and I'm just going to go ahead and close that. Um, so really quick, I'm going to put a picture up here of uh, when I test fired the um, cold smoker and you can see that I opened it right up and it was just pouring out. One thing about using a cold smoker is that it has a harder time getting started on the smoke flow because there's no temperature. When you have temperature the smoke will flow through the smoker uh, more easily. So I'm going to open this up and uh, I'm going to um, snap another picture here for you. I didn't take a lot of different pictures but I want to make sure that you can see what I see here. And I'm going to turn the flash on because I want to get in here. I'm sure one of those will turn out good and uh, we'll take a look right there. And you can see the inside and you can see that there's some pellets in there. Um, 
the instructions for the from the manufacturers say that you can put a whole cup of pellets in. I never do that. I usually add it uh, somewhere in between half and quarter. And uh, today I'm just going to rough here. There's a little bit in there, but that's about a quarter cup more. And so I just put it in there. I don't want to overfill it. Like I said, they it doesn't work well when it's completely full. And I'm going to show you something here. So when it's running, you just turn this. I'm going to get a little closer to the camera. It's just a wing nut attached to the bottom of the plunger. And you give this a little turn, and it'll help advance it. Um, but I just normally, like I said, try not to overload it, and then it'll burn out completely. There is a cleaning tool that comes with it that you can clean this out with. It's uh, basically a screw on steroids. So it's um, right here. Handle, big screw, and uh, you just put that in the pipe there and clean that out. So now what we're going to do is we're just going to go ahead and turn this on. The little on-off switch on the side here, it's already plugged in and everything. And the nice thing about that unit is, is that if you take this camping with you and you only need a little bit of power, you can plug it into your dashboard and... Uh, do a little bit of cold smoking in the morning. So let's say you were uh, caught some trout the night before and you soaked them in a brine bath overnight. In the morning, you could uh, put them in your smoker, you know, if you had a propane or something like that. And you could get the smoke running into them really heavy and then turn on the propane and finish cooking them that way. And then, of course, like I said, if they're filleted out and brined, then the smoke will enter the meat almost immediately for something like trout, which is great. Um, so it's only going to take a couple of minutes here for this thing to completely fill with smoke. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and open it up and take a quick look and see if it's pumping smoke out yet. I did test fire it, and it was working pretty well. So I can tell you that this thing almost starts kicking out smoke immediately. And if it doesn't kick out smoke immediately, that means that the pellets are not sitting on the burner and that you'll need to either spin the plunger on it or you'll need to uh, empty it out and start it over again. I find that I like to just empty the thing out um, when I'm concerned it's not working correctly and make sure there's nothing around the burner and try not to mess with it too much. Just get the stuff out and away from it. Maybe even use a... Um, a small narrow paintbrush or a cooking brush so that you don't damage anything. All right, it's starting to pump out smoke pretty good. So I'm going to go ahead and take a picture here and let's see if we can get this. Boy, that looks pretty good. So now I'll go ahead and close that up. And uh, when I use this device, so here's the picture of the smoke coming out. Um, and you can see that the smoke is starting to come out around the edges of the electrical connector and stuff like that. Um, normally when you're using it on the regular mode, the um, smoke will uh, go straight up and it won't come out that direction. I opened up the back damper 100% here so it's fully open because this thing kicks out a lot of smoke and I want it to have the opportunity to come straight up. And uh, I don't know if you can see it on the camera now, but we are starting to flow. And as soon as it warms up a little bit more, it'll actually flow even more. Um, so we're going to let it go for another minute here, and then we're going to go ahead and uh, cut the video for, uh, for a while and let this stuff smoke. One of the nice things about doing the um, smoked cubes is that you don't need to smoke them for a long time. If you do a block of cheese, then you're probably going to want to smoke it for up to four hours. Uh, something else that I didn't mention is that we are using apple pellets. When I do cheese, I like to use real mild wood, so I avoid um, hickory or mesquite almost exclusively, unless I'm just going to hit it really light. Um, but I usually use uh, apple and cherry and sometimes pecan. Um, I think that apple actually is the best one for that, and that's why I put apple in today. And, uh, and I just use the same brand that, this, uh, that manufactures this most of the time. But if you can buy them on sale, sometimes I'll grab whatever um, they have. 
usually on sale, usually end up with things like uh, hickory and mesquite because uh, that's what people buy in large quantities for their um, smokers for like your pellet webbers and traegers and stuff like that. Um, but if you can see here, uh, there is a little bit of breeze today, but you can see the smoker is kicking really good. So we're going to go ahead and pause the video and let this thing do its work. Um, I will uh, reload this with another half cup of pellets as soon as it's done um, burning what's in there. And it just, I mean, it is just kicking out smoke. It is crazy good. So, all right, we'll talk to you in a few minutes. Okay, so here we are, and it's been a couple of hours here. And uh, I did have to um, have to clear the pellet uh, smoker here one time. Um, and like I was saying is, is that it will uh, get like, uh, I don't know if gummed up is the right word, but, you know, you get a little bit of the... Um, um, sticky smoke buildup around the inside edge and some of the pellets will stick to it and so if you try to add more without cleaning it up first it can be an issue. Uh, something else that I want to note is that when you do something like liquid smoke one of the ways that you can do that is through a cold pipe so if you take a pipe and put ice around it um, and then blow smoke through it the condensation will cause you to form liquid smoke, which uh, if you want to make that, you can actually save a lot of money rather than buying it. But um, the problem is, is that as you're using your smoker, it the liquid will actually pour out of the tube. And so you do want to put it somewhere where you're not worried about that. This uh, table, when I'm done with this process, is going to have to get hosed down and scrubbed real good because I've got a lot of that kind of uh, smoke liquid on it from the smoker itself not being level and from the um, cold smoke generator. So I don't know if you can see uh, but I uh, made sure that it was running really good for the when I started the video up but we are done here so I'll just go ahead and reach back here and switch off the switch and then I will take and put the cheese on the uh, tray here. So you see like I said, I got it going really good. One thing you want to remember with the cheese cubes is you don't want to over smoke them. They will get bitter. Um, where with a cheese block, um, they will start out bitter, but if you age them enough, that that will actually spread out. So I like to just slide that right back off of there. And uh, these are just barely done here. And I'm actually, I'm actually thinking that the cheddar could actually use more smoke, um, but I'm not going to do that. I want to keep it really light, and uh, I did move the tray down because I wanted to get it uh, closer to the um, to the smoke uh, pipe there. And I'm just going to move this back up in its normal position and leave it there for now. So I just want you to take a look at this really quick. And uh, you can see around the edges how, like on the whiter cheese, it's easier to see that they've taken on a little bit of smoke. On the cheddar, it's really hard to tell. Um, but on this, you can tell pretty easily. Um, now, this stuff is not ready to eat. And I'll explain that to you. Is that what you need to do is you need to put it in a Ziploc or in a uh, vacuum seal bag. And then let it rest for at least a week. I would... I would probably lean towards a couple of weeks, um, but if you vacuum seal it and put it in the uh, back of the fridge where it's the coldest, it'll be fine. It'll stay there nice and good. Um, cheese can stay in the refrigerator for a long time, but um, after you let it rest for at least a week, if you want to keep it for longer, you can throw it in the freezer. And um, I don't know how long you know I've had cheese in the freezer, but I know I've had it in there for up to a year and dethawed it and eaten it so without problem. So I'm going to give this a little try. You have to excuse the microphone, but I was just trying something. So you can taste the smoke, but it does have that little uh, almost bitter smokeness to it. But that'll age out. So you don't, like I said, you don't want to eat it right away, but you might sample one piece just to make sure it's taken on the amount of smoke that you want. And again, with these, um, I call it smoked cheese nuggets, 
you really you don't want to over smoke them. It's not like smoking a block of cheese, and then the block of cheese you want to rest that for a lot longer. So anyway, so um, there you go, and I'm going to um, go put these in a uh, in a vacuum seal bag, and uh, you'll see the picture here, and toss them in the fridge for a couple of weeks, and then they'll be great for parties or whatever. And like I said, this adds a little dimension to your cheese, and doesn't cost you hardly anything because really all you're talking about is a few pellets, and you're already using something you had. Something else I want to mention to you is that you see the pipe here and the reason I use the pipe is to cool the smoke so it doesn't come in heated um, but this cold smoke the um, smoke chief cold smoke generator has a bracket and so once you there's directions that come with it um, telling you how to drill a hole and attach the bracket to the smoker but once you do that you can literally just attach it right to the side and I'm gonna just set this down for a second and just because I want to show you everything. So you remove the pipe. And then this, there would be a bracket and there's a bolt there that um, attaches it to the bracket. And this would literally just sit right here. And then when you switch it on, the smoke would just go straight into the unit. Um, but again, there is heat generated and you can feel it right now. It is pretty warm. I mean, I can put my hand on it, but it's not comfortable. Um, when I used to work at a coffee shop, that's probably about 160 degrees, maybe a little bit more. Um, but, uh, yeah, so that right there, um, would just attach to the back of it. Um, and it's intended to be attached to the back of a, um, of a Big Chief or a Little Chief smoker, which I use mine on my Little Chief. Um, Big Chief works really well the way it is for hot smoking. Um, but also... You can just put it on the side of a grill right where the rotisserie goes in and uh, you can smoke your food while you're, um, while you're uh, barbecuing it on a propane grill or even any other grill where a rotisserie would be used. So anyway, the links for all the products that we talked about today are below. They are affiliate links, so if you use them, I will get compensated and I appreciate it. Thanks for watching and I hope you enjoy uh, some uh, smoky cheese nuggets. Have a great day.